Good day everyone, my name is Ritra and I'm a counselling psychologist here at Century Retreat. Today, joining us is Dr. Rashid, a consultant psychiatrist here in our facility. We'll be talking a little bit about how medication helps these addiction clients. Good day, Dr. Rashid. How are you doing? Good evening, Ritra. I'm fine, thank you. Glad to be here. Tell us, Dr. Rashid, how long have you been treating clients with addiction? All right, uh, now it's 2019, so I'd say about 10 years now, into treating patients with uh, especially, especially addiction problems, psychiatry patients with patients with addiction problems since 2009. And how has your experience been? Wow, uh, every day is a new day. Uh, every client is a new client. Every client has a new problem. Uh, if I have uh, two clients using amphetamines, uh, both are using uh, amphetamines, both of them are not the same. The way we treat both of them are not the same because the problems in both are not the same. So every client is a new client to me. Every client is a new problem to me. So it is, it is different. Although the substance is the same, the problem is different. The uh, solution is different. How does uh, medication help these clients? Okay, uh, uh, two things to, to consider here. Uh, is this only addiction problem or this is addiction problem on top of a major mental illness like depression, bipolar disorder and all that. So when it, when it comes to depression, uh, when it comes to addiction with a major mental illness, depression, bipolar, definitely you need medication there. Some people, they take substance because they self-medicate, they're depressed, they can't sleep, they take alcohol, they're they are depressed, they don't feel happiness at all, they take amphetamines, they're depressed, they can't concentrate, they, they, they take ketamine, they take ice, amphetamines for that matter. They abuse Ritalin. So you need to know what's the problem. If the problem is the depression, then we tackle the depression. We have to give them antidepressant. If they have crossed that certain line of symptoms, there's no point just talking to them. It's not going to change because the chemical imbalance in the brain is there already. So we need to give them medication. If this is schizophrenia and the voices are telling them to take substances, so I have to treat the schizophrenia. I have to give them antipsychotic so that the voices are no more there and they don't take, they, they don't take substance at all. That's one. And we have most of the patients uh, addiction problems only. So when it comes to addiction problems only, the main reason, two main reasons why they keep taking substance, one is because of the craving, second is because of the withdrawals. So when you talk about substance like opioid, al uh, alcohol, the withdrawals are very specific, tremors, agitation, they cannot sleep, nausea, vomiting, hallucinations, all that. I cannot just treat that by keeping them in a place and not giving them anything, go going cold turkey. The withdrawals are going to be very, very, very uh, disturbing. So to make the withdrawals easy, to make the withdrawals smooth, I have to give them medication because not for withdrawals. And for cravings, like the second one is craving. This is the main reason why they keep taking, they keep taking the substance. They go and meet friends who took substance before they, they get that visual craving. They, they pass through the shop that they used to buy alcohol from, they get that visual craving. So for this, I need to give them some medication to reduce the craving. So we can work on other things, on triggers, uh, how to overcome triggers. So, Anti-craving medication, naltrexone, uh, acamprosate, paclofen, topiramate. So these medications are proven in the literature. A lot of research has been done on these medications that it, it is proven to be effective in reducing cravings for patients of any substance use. So I will give that medication. And does this medication have to be long term? Okay. We talk about addiction. No one comes to addiction centers uh, just because they use alcohol for a week. They don't come to addiction centers. They don't get admitted to rehabilitation center because they use amphetamine for a week, ketamine for a week, uh, opioid for a week. No, no one comes with that problem. It's when the family really thinks that this is a really big problem. So when it is a really big problem, I mean, it has been going on for a while. It would have started off with cannabis at the age of about 15, 16, smoking, and then they go for higher, higher level drugs. So the problem has been going on for a while. And if the problem has been there for 3-4 years and expecting it to go in 3-4 days is impossible. Mm -hmm. Expecting it to go off in 3-4 months is impossible. So I would say the medication is long term, definitely long term, but about 6-9 to nine months. The brain takes about 6-9 to nine months before it can adapt to a medication. Before all the neurochemicals get stabilized, it takes about 6-9 to nine months. So for me, long term is about 6-9 to nine months. That's the case when the problem is only addiction. If there is major mental illness there, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, like I said, then the duration gets longer. Definitely longer than that, longer than nine months. And apart from medication, what else can help these clients? That's a very important question. Medication alone doesn't play a really major role. I would say it's about 40-60. Mm -hmm. 
medication plays 40% of the role, 60% of the role is psychotherapy. You need behavioral modification, you need motivational interview, you need in patients who are not ready to change. Some patients they are brought in because they are forced by the family members. Given a choice, they don't want to be in the center. They want to be outside. They say, I am in control. Okay, I'm definitely not going to use it uh, outside. But when they go out, the next day they start using it again. So in these kind of patients, you need to work on the triggers. Visual triggers, emotional triggers. Uh, you need to work on their motivation. Are they ready to change? Maybe I should change. Maybe I shouldn't change. I'll think about it. Okay, I am ready to change. That's, that's stages of changes we are, we are talking about. You need to motivate them. Why do you need to change? And I can tell him, you know, uh, alcohol, for instance, alcohol does this to your body, does this to your body, does this to your emotion, does this to your to your psychosis, blah, blah, blah. It's like taking a class. He goes up, he'll forget. That's not the aim. The aim is for the patient, for the client to realize this is what alcohol does to my body. This is what alcohol does to my emotion. This is what alcohol does to my social environment. I need to change that. I, I can't tell him that you need to make a change now. I, we don't do that. You have he has to realize that he has to make a change. Then the change will be sustained. It can be sustained for long. So behavioral techniques, psychotherapy is of utmost importance in any patients who, who come in with addiction. Yes, you've mentioned social support just now. In your opinion, how can family members help clients with addiction? We talk about addiction. Like I said, I have been in addiction treatment for about 10 years now. What I realized I said that every patient is different, their problems is different, right? But one common feature in almost all the clients with addiction problem is everything starts from home. Every single thing starts from home. Why why do some people with the same problem they don't they don't take substance? People blame it on peer pressure, this wrong environment and all. But if the teaching at home is good, your child is not gonna take substance when he becomes bigger. And when he has taken substance now, <clears throat> blaming everything on him is not right. Family has to play a major role here. Family first have to make the, the client understand that we are here for you. We understand this is a problem. This is a medical problem. When you talk about addiction, addiction is a medical problem. We understand that this is a medical problem. We understand this needs treatment. We will support your treatment. Don't judge. Have some trust. Have some trust. When the page, when the client is in, in rehabilitation center already, trust that he is going to make a change. Don't scrutinize him for, for everything. The moment he comes back, I want to go out. What time are you going to come back? Uh, you must come back at 1 o'clock. Don't go see these friends. Huh? You better not see this guy anymore. It's not about that. If the, sol if the foundation is strong enough, you can put him in between 100 people who are using amphetamine, he will still not use. And that comes from the family. The family has to build that trust build that network and it's reciprocal. You want him to help himself, you have to help him. So that's where the family comes in. Thank you so much, Dr. Rashid, for your time. There you go, everyone. You've heard it yourself from a psychiatrist who's been in the field of addiction for about 10 years now. I hope all of y'all have learned a little bit more about how medication can help these clients and hope you can seek help if you know anyone who's suffering from an addiction. You can call our toll-free number and somebody will get you the help that you need. Thank you.